Jaya Gopi Janavala Bha Girivardhari Yashoda Nandana Vraja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Vrajjana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanyachari Yamuna Tira Vanyachari Jaya Radha Madhava Gunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Gunja Bihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parijaj Kacharya Astato Sri Srimad Bhakti Danta Swami Srila Prabhupad Ki Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parijaj Kacharya Astato Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupad Ki Gaur Premanandi Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 19, Text 31 Maitreya Vacha Evam Hiranyaksham Asya Vikramam 
विक्रम सादिशुक्र जगामलोक स्वखाडितोत्सव समीदिता पुष्क विष्टरादिक्षम अस्य विक्रम सादिशुक्र जगामलोक स्वखाडितोत्सव समीदिता पुष्क वैष्णवीस Maitreya Vacha Shri Maitreya said Evam Das Hiranyaksham Hiranyaksha Asahai Vikramam Very powerful Sa the Lord Sa the Yitva after killing Hari the supreme personality of Godhead Adi Shukraha, the origin of the boar species. Jagama, returned. Lokam, to his abode. Swam, own. Akhandita, 
uninterrupted utsavam festival samidita being praised pushkara vistara lotus seed by lord brahma whose seed is a lotus adibhi and the others translation shri maitreya continued after thus killing the most formidable demon hiranyaksha the supreme lord hari the origin of the boar species returned to his own abode where there is always an uninterrupted festival the lord was praised by all the demigods headed by brahma purport by his divine grace shri prabhupad ki jai <coughs> The Lord is spoken of here with as the origin of the boar species, as stated in the Vedanta Sutra 1.1.2. The absolute truth is the origin of everything. Therefore, it is to be understood that all eight million four hundred thousand species of bodily forms originate from the Lord, who is always Adi, or the beginning. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna addresses the Lord as Adyam, or the original. Similarly, in the Brahma Samhita, the Lord is addressed as Adi Purusham, the original person. Indeed, in Bhagavad Gita 10.8, the Lord Himself declares, "Mata sarvam, Mata sarvam pravartate." From Me, everything proceeds. In this situation, the Lord assumed the shape of a boar to kill the demon Hiranyaksha and pick up the earth from the Garbha ocean. Thus, He became Adi Shukra, the original boar. in the material world a boar or pig is considered most abominable but the adi shukra the supreme personality of godhead was not treated as an ordinary boar even lord brahma and other demigods praised the lord's form as a boar this verse confirms the statement in bhagavad gita that the lord appears as he is from his transcendental abode for the sake of killing the miscreants and saving the devotees by killing the demon hiranyaksha he fulfilled his promise to kill the demons and always protect the demigods headed by brahma the statement that the lord returned to his own abode indicates that he has his own particular transcendental residence since he is full of all energies he is all pervasive in spite of his residing in goloka vrindavan just as the sun although situated in a particular place within the universe is present by its sunshine throughout the universe although the lord has his particular abode in which to reside he is all pervasive the impersonalists accept one aspect of the lord's features the all pervasive aspect but they cannot understand his localized situation in his transcendental abode where he always engages in fully transcendental pastimes especially mentioned in this verse is the word akhanditotsavam utsava means pleasure whenever some function takes place to express happiness it is called utsava utsava the expression of complete happiness is always present in the vaikuntha lokas the abode of the lord who is worshipable even by demigods like brahma to say nothing of other less important entities such as human beings The Lord descends from His abode to this world, and therefore He is called Avatar, which means one who descends. Sometimes Avatar is understood to refer to an incarnation who assumes a material form of flesh and bone, but actually, Avatar refers to one who descends from higher regions. The Lord's abode is situated far above this material sky, and He descends from the higher position. Thus, He is called Avatar. translation again <coughs> shri maitreya continued after thus killing the most formidable demon hiranyaksha the supreme lord hari the origin of the boar species returned to his own abode where there is always an uninterrupted festival the lord was praised by all the demigods headed by brahma om agyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya चक्षुर्मी तस्म श्रीगुरव नम जाय श्रीकृष्णचैतन प्रभुनिनंद श्रीअद्वैतागरधार श्रीवास आदि गौरभक्तवृंद 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे the supreme personality of godhead is the origin of everything as it is said in brahma samhita adi purusham he is the origin of all the species the first the very first verse in shrimad bhagavatam as the prelude to the bhagavatam says janmadya se yatah anyavat itaratascha that the absolute truth is primeval and the cause of all causes of all the manifested universe and krishna himself declares aham sarvasya prabhavo i am the source of all spiritual and material worlds mata sarvam pravartate everything emanates from me everything means everything and so we are here seeing that all the species that we see in the material world are also coming from that original person the adi purusha lord hari is the origin of boar species adi shukra and what is he doing when he descends in any of his forms any of his transcendental forms he is always engaged in transcendental pastimes another name for krishna is rasaraj the king of all transcendental humors that's that is the main occupation of the supreme personality of godhead to engage in loving transcendental pastimes with his devotees he is always immersed in pleasure activities as it is also said <coughs> in chaitanya charitamrita adi leela swayam bhagwan krishna ekale ishvara advitya nandatmaja rasika shekhara he is rasika shekhar he is the enjoyer of all mellows and another another place in madhya leela it is said swayam bhagwan krishna sarvamsi sarvashraya vishuddha nirmala prema sarva rasamaya that the swayam bhagwan krishna the the original supreme personality of godhead <coughs> he is the reservoir of all energies sarva amsi sarva ashraya he is vishuddha he is transcendental he is nirmala free from any material contamination sarva rasa maya and what is he doing he is engaged in loving transcendental pastimes he is the reservoir of all pleasure so the supreme personality of godhead whether he is present in his abode in the spiritual world in the vaikuntha lokas or goloka vrindavan or if he is present in the material world he is always engaged in loving transcendental pastimes with his devotees so we see here how krishna enjoyed the fighting with his devotee in the form of a demon here in yaksha and after he terminated that demon after enjoying that exchange krishna went back to his abode to again engage in uninterrupted loving pastimes with his devotees so krishna always maintains his position of being the supreme enjoyer whether he comes in a form of a boar or whether he comes in a form of a fish or a tortoise we usually have this material conception that only humans have the prerogative to enjoy and to be happy the animals they can they don't have that right some fo- foolish people also proclaim that animals don't have any soul it's all speculative theories but on the absolute pra- platform when the supreme personality of god had descends in any of the forms in any of the species of course we hear in bhagavatam of different species of different incarnations of the supreme the boar form the taurus the fish but in other universes krishna can appear and is appearing in all other different species of life that we might not read in shrimad bhagavatam so <clears throat> krishna doesn't have to work for his pleasure for his enjoyment on the flip side on the material existence in our experiences we have to endeavor we have to work for our happiness we have to work for our enjoyment it doesn't come easy you have to put in the effort 
And remember, according to the Bhagavad Gita, work doesn't mean just our occupational duty, our profession. Work, according to Bhagavad Gita, means any endeavor that we do for acquiring the sense objects. Any endeavor of the senses to come in contact with sense objects is work. So, even our planning and contemplating how we can enjoy, how we can acquire, how we can have pleasure is work. Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsa. It all begins with contemplating on the objects of senses. How we can be happy in this way, how we can be happy in that way, in this relationship, with this career or this passion or different travel opportunities. Those things will make us happy. So it all begins with our contemplating. We, we think, we meditate, how endeavoring, engaging in those activities will give me happiness. So it all starts with meditating and it, it is work because you have to plan, you have to um, strategize and see how you, your happiness can come to you. It doesn't come on its own. I remember as a, as a kid, I used to travel a lot because my father loved traveling. So we would go to South India, North, West, Himalayas, everywhere. And I would see him, he's, before every trip, he's engaged in deep meditation, planning where to stay, where, which all sites to see. He doesn't want to miss any of the sites, the places that we are going. It's lot, lots of anxiety even in, in, our, in our endeavors for getting some happiness in this material world. Now one could say that, what is the problem? If we have to work for our happiness, at least I'm getting some kind of happiness, at least I'm getting something better than being hopeless. <clears throat> True. And that's why a lot of happiness studies and researchers say that don't just have one source of happiness in your life. Have multiple pools of activities that can give you happiness. And sp split those activities throughout the day so you can you can feel happy from doing one activity and jumping on to another activity, doing another activity and so on and so forth. And that, in that way, you will be happy, you will be peaceful. But one thing that the researchers or the scientists miss to observe is that the quality of that happiness that we are engaging in is very insubstantial and temporary. So although we are trying to juggle all these different things, whether it be relationships, career opportunities, traveling, this, that, the other, we are trying to juggle all these balls, but eventually everything falls apart, it all comes down. So then there is no real happiness even in, in juggling different uh, opportunities. And one thing that was interesting when I first read about this was <clears throat> that so-called happiness that materialists feel is not really happiness, it's just the absence of distress. So what you call the so-called happiness is not the true happiness that can fulfill you, that can make you peaceful and satisfied. Just when we see some absence of distress, we just label it as happiness. Prabhupada would often give the example of sweet rice mixed with sand. Imagine that you made sweet rice for over a couple of days, just slowly churning it and really making it thick and nice with milk and ghee and sugar. And then as you start to taste the sweet rice, you feel some sweetness, but then crunch, crunch, crunch. You start to taste the, the sand. And as you are drinking the sweet rice, you think that, okay, maybe the sand will go away eventually. I'll, I'll just 
go through it and eventually I'll get through the, the nectar part. But no, it is, it is mixed. It is, there's flip side to the, the coin of material happiness. The flip side is that there's always distress. So even though we might feel some temporary meager happiness in our endeavors for material enjoyment, it is always filled with distress and suffering. <clears throat> Just like uh, a businessman wouldn't want to invest in stocks, in market, shares, which are sure to fail, similarly an intelligent person should think, why should I invest in my sources of happiness which are sure to end? which will surely give me some kind of distress, some kind of misery. Why can't we find happiness that is everlasting, that is never ending? Because that is our prerogative, that is our birthright claim as a spiritual being, as part and parcel of Krishna. So when the individual living entity comes to that point of inquiry, Brahma Jagyasa, that's when the real human form of life begins. Now, on the absolute plane, however, Krishna doesn't have to work for his enjoyment, for his pastimes. Krishna has different energies, different potencies that arrange everything for his pleasure, for his pastimes, for his enjoyment. As my spiritual master often says, Krishna is all play and no work. So, in the 10th canto, it is said, Brahman Bhagavata Tasya Bhumna Suchanda Vartina that the unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead freely acts according to his own desires. And his, his desires are directed towards um, pleasurable activities with his devotees. And that tendency of enjoyment and finding pleasure within us is also coming from Krishna because we are part and parcel of Krishna. Interesting to see that Krishna also has desires as us and his desires are always fulfilled. In fact, in, in Adi Leela Prabhupada writes that Krishna has unlimited desires and Krishna also has the capacity to fulfill, to fulfill those unlimited desires. Whereas in our me tiny experience of material existence, we don't have unlimited desires and surely we don't have the capacity, unlimited capacity to fulfill those desires. Even if we start to count hmm, how many desires we have, that we can fulfill if we have that unlimited capacity. Sure, okay, we want a nice home, bank balance that can give us, <clears throat> give us whatever we need, a good relationship, a good spouse, and a, 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 a job which fulfills us. After, after a point of time, we start, mm, start falling short. And then we're like, okay, maybe we can go for world peace or mm, you know, a, a saner society, less environmental havoc and so on and so forth. So we can't go beyond even five or ten desires. But Krishna, here we see that he has unlimited desires for his enjoyment and he has the capacity to fulfill all of those unlimited desires. And so here we see how Krishna, Lord Hari, in the original, original form of the boar, is enjoying, always engaging in festivities. So he engaged in pleasure activities in killing the demon and then he goes back, returns to his abode to engage in uninterrupted festivities. And those festivities are happening for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, 
we should all feel very fortunate and grateful that we are living in a society where there are always festivities happening uninterrupted festival festivities throughout the year and by the grace of Srila Prabhupada we can we all have that opportunity to to cooperate and engage in these festivals for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You should feel gratitude for His Divine Grace for literally saving our, our lives from this material existence. We don't know where, how our life would have been if we, we didn't meet a devotee or we didn't get a book. We would just be an ordinary person on the streets, living our life, working, trying to be happy. But Prabhupada has filled our lives with, with these transcendental festivals which are uninterrupted, one thing after the other, one month after the other. There are always festivals happening. And again, it is up to us how much we tap into that festivity mood. Prabhupada has given us the chance to, to become Krishna conscious and perfect our life. However, now it is up to us. We have the ticket back to Godhead, but it is up to us to hold on to that ticket. I remember the first time I read one of Srila Prabhupada's books, Journey of Self-Discovery. The first sentence said, are you struggling in this material world? I'm like, yes, I am struggling, definitely. And page after page, everything just resonated with me so much as if Prabhupada is talking to me directly. And I'm sure many of us had that experience. So although the, the grand disciples and great grand disciples never had got the opportunity to associate with Prabhupada physically, but through his books, through his instructions, we can all know Prabhupada and be intimately connected with him by reading his books. In fact, even many devotees back in the 60s and 70s never got a chance to, to have association of Prabhupada or had a minimal association. But because of the potency of Srila Prabhupada's books, and his, his instructions, 50 years later, his movement is still going on and spreading. In fact, Prabhupada said himself that if you want to know me, then read my books. My books are better than physical association. So it is something that we should all meditate because we have this hung up on physicality that, you know, I'm this body and if I want to know someone, then... I need to have an interaction with them, one-on-one, -on -one physically. But on the spiritual plane, it doesn't work like that. Just by the, the Vani of the spiritual master, one can have a more intimate and a more deeper and intense relationship. <clears throat> In the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, after the Brahma Vimohana Leela, after Lord Brahma is bewildered by Krishna when he stole all Krishna's calves and cowherd boys. When Brahma comes to his senses, he offers this beautiful prayer, which, uh, which is again very uh, beautiful and something to, to meditate on. Tatte anukampam susumikshamano bhunjana evatma kritam vipakam Hridvag Bapur Bhir Vidadhan Namaste Jeeve to Yo Mukti Padesa Daya Bhak My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words and body, is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. And in the purport, Prabhupada writes that all we have to do is 
just stay alive in Krishna consciousness. Just stay in the society of the devotees, practice Krishna consciousness, practice the regulative principles and perfection will surely come to us just like an unripe mango all it, the mango has to do is just sit in the sun and eventually the mango will become ripe and sweet similarly all we have to do is be in the association of devotees no matter what happens never leave the society of devotees and engage in uh, devotional service and spiritual perfection will automatically naturally come to us the mercy of the acharyas the mercy of the supreme personality of godhead will automatically come to us all we have to do is just stay alive in krishna consciousness I'll stop here if anyone has any questions Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, you made a lot of nice points, especially near the end of your talk. Uh, I made it abundantly clear that by sticking with, by staying with, by focusing on Krishna consciousness as often as possible, actually all the time if possible, uh, that is the way to stay Krishna conscious and continue to build Krishna conscious. So I thank you. It doesn't hurt to hear that over and over again because we can all forget about it due to the abundance of distractions which can take us away. I just wanted to make one other, <clears throat> sorry, one other point and that was uh, all the desires that you were speaking of that Krishna can have infinite or innumerable desires these are not ordinary uh, what we call like material desires uh, um, desires you know for uh, ice cream or desires for uh, a bicycle or desire anything that Krishna desires because it's coming from a totally completely transcendental person the desire is also transcendental and if Krishna <coughs> wills to have a, d a bicycle it will be a transcendental bicycle and if it gives it to you, you might start flying up into the sky. It's not ordinary because he's not ordinary. So the important point is, and that's the point that you're making over and over again, is that Krishna is not like us. He may appear to be like us, but he's infinitely higher, greater, bigger, grander, and more important than us. And if we keep this in mind, then the differentiation between our limitedness and Krishna's unlimitedness will be obvious to us and we in, our, in turn will become greater and higher and bigger and better by his grace because we're acting as he wants us to act. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for the wonderful class. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, Dr. Kirwin took me to uh, one of the uh, university. It's called the, uh, the, the, the University of the Worst. You know, on the way to that university, I was, you know, sharing with Kirwin that, you know, Sri Prabhupada is really, really very great. He's really our savior, you know, because he made us understand that this material world is just like a, a big prison house. Because whoever comes to this material world, you know, he has to suffer from old age disease and ultimately death. And, you know, Srila Prabhupada, he, you know, really showed us the way how we can, you know, escape, you know, from this, you know, big prison house, you know, by the practice of this, uh, you know, Krishna consciousness, you know, by build up, you know, good relationship uh, with the Supreme Lord Krishna, you see. So, Srila Prabhupada is really, really our, you know, savior, you know. Yeah, I just want to, you know, share this, you know, realization, you know. Thank, Thank you. you
Ravindran Prabhu. Yeah, you were mentioning about how the living entity has, can't fulfill all his desires or like that. And you were saying that the living entity doesn't have unlimited desires. Uh, you know where that's stated? Yes, it is stated in, hmm, let's see. In the Adi Leela, ninth chapter, text 38, Prabhupada writes in the purport how God is unlimited and his desires are also unlimited. Mm -hmm. And not just that, but Krishna has the capacity to fulfill all his unlimited desires. And he has that unlimited capacity because of his different energies, Ladini Shakti, the Chit Shakti, and so on and so forth. So Krishna is not personally orchestrating his his pastimes but everything is being done for him all he, krishna has to do is desire and everything comes everything gets manifested yeah i understand that but you, you mentioned how the living entity does not have unlimited desires itself yes because when we are because we are tiny part and parcel of krishna krishna is the infinite and we are infinitesimal Krishna has unlimited desires and we, our desires are very limited. We are, we might have, you can say unlimited desires, but it is this, we are doing the same thing in, in different form, in different planet, in different bodies, but the crux or the essence is the same. So even if we sit down and start to think how many desires we have, we'll, we can write down 10, 20, 50, 100 desires, but eventually we'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm satisfied. But we cannot match our desire propensity with Krishna. Krishna can have unlimited desires, but we, our desires will fall short in comparison to Krishna's desires. Okay, we'll stop there. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. kanchan go rangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishbhanu Sute Devi Pranamani Hari Vancha kalpataru bhayascha Kripa sindhu bhayevacha Patitanam pavanibhyo Vaishnanibhyo Namo namaha Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Eva Kevalam, Kalova Nasteva 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 Gatiranyatha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakt Vrinda Oh.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 टुगेदर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे